Today we're going to talk about why I'm changing up my get home bag. Let me get camp set up here real quick and then I'll tell you what and why I'm doing it. Be back with you in a few minutes. Before I string this uh, tarp up, I just got this yesterday. Uh, it came from Northwestern. It's an 8x10 El Cheapo, I think it was $8.99 tarp. I want to show you how I uh, store this. I'm going to step up closer here. If you look on here, you'll see all these balls on here. And of course, these are the bungee straps that are in a circle. I just keep them on the tarp. That's where I'm going to use them at, and it keeps the tarp closed. Uh, keeps it pretty small. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty small area for a that's a pretty small area for an eight by ten tarp. Anyway, let me get this strung up, and then I'll get back with you. Okay, I've got my camp set up for the day. Uh, it's a very simple uh, tarp shelter over the top. My hammock is up, strung up underneath it. You can't see it from here. Um, my little camp stool, my bag sitting right here. Uh, let me get in the shade here. It is already really hot and humid. Uh, let me get in the shade under here and then I'll get to the point of the video. The point of today's video is about a get home bag. A couple of months ago, a very good friend of mine, Bob 808 Knight, did a video about his get home bag. Those are never meant to be long term things. That's you're out doing your normal thing, uh, you're at work, whatever the case may be and a disaster happens. Zombies attack, Martians land, the lunar pool pulls the oceans out of the, out of the, up on the land. Whatever the reason may be that you would have to get back home in a disaster to get to your kids, your wife, your husband, your loved ones, your equipment, and your survival gear. Uh, I'm man enough to admit that I made a mistake. I responded to Bob's video and he has a great kit. But I kind of made fun of him for it, for how big it was for just a get home bag. Uh, and then I made a video response and I showed this bag, or one of these bags. Um, these are the kits that are in all of our vehicles, my wife's, my kids, my work trucks, everything. Uh, and I told him, told the world, this is all I need. Uh, I'll get back home with this plus my pistol and I don't, I don't need those big bags. A couple of weeks ago, another friend of mine, Dave, and I'll put links to both of their channels down here in the description, did a very, very cool series of videos about testing his get home bag. Uh, he went to work where he works at, he owns a company, he went to work, grabbed his bag and said, I'm going to get home over the next two days. Sorry, I don't remember the mileage of it. And then he did a series of videos about what he encountered, what he saw, how his equipment worked out. Uh, he didn't make it home. He would have. If it had been an emergency, he would have made it home. Um, the, the key to that, though, is the stuff that he learned. Uh, I need to do this better. I need to have this. I don't need this. Uh, I need to rethink that. That leads me to my video now. I live in deep, deep, deep South Texas. Uh, I am, most of the time, I'm just a couple of miles from Mexico in the southernmost point of Texas. My normal job that I work at four to five days a week uh, quite often requires travel. Uh, a lot of you made fun of the videos I've shot in my truck with all the cracks in the windshield. It's because I'm about 300,000 miles on that truck in the last four years. I do a lot of driving. Um, I was thinking about Dave's video last week, <clears throat> the series, as I was driving out to Laredo. For those of you that don't know how far it is, it's about 200 miles from where I live. It is ranch country. It is rough out there. There's just a couple little towns. Most of them are under 100 people. Um, and it just goes forever and ever and ever. As I'm driving out there thinking about how nice it was out there and how desolate and, and open and 
and nobody there, it dawned on me. I'm going to be, we'll call it 200 miles from home. On my best day, and I'm talking my best day, I might be able to cover 20 miles a day. Bells started going off in my head. I went, crap, if I get stuck out here and I have to use my get home bag, I'm going to be better off to have it than not to have it. But we're talking 10 to 14 days to get from where I'm at back home. This is not the kit that I want to have my life depend on for two weeks. Um, and I don't care what environment I'm in. Uh, down here, I seldom, if ever, have to worry about freezing to death. I have to worry about heat. I have to worry about water. Uh, there's probably just two months a year, maximum two months a year, uh, where the majority of the nights gets cold enough that it would be uncomfortable if I didn't have something to, to sleep in or just a fire. A fire would do. Um, as I'm driving, I, got, I have three and a half, four hours there, three and a half, four hours back. Uh, I started thinking more and more and more. Matter of fact, I started dwelling on the subject. And I decided, yep, I'm going to have to upgrade my get-home bag. Uh, and, I, and then I started thinking, boy, I'm going to have to listen to Bob. Uh, I don't mind that. love Bob. He's a great guy. Uh, what comes around goes around. So, today, I'm going to unveil my new get-home bag. However, keep this in mind. I don't know that I'm going to keep this bag. Um, there, there are some shortcomings to this bag, but the equipment that's in it will, will be the majority of the equipment. I'm out today testing. I plan on doing five days of testing. They won't all be on videos, and they won't all be today, of course. Uh, but I plan on doing five days of testing. Come out today, set everything up, try everything out, make a list of what I like, what I don't like, go home, change out the things I need to, come back out, try it again. Uh, I figure by the fifth time I take it out, I'll have the system down. Let me readjust the camera so you can see better, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, here's the bag. It's nothing fancy. It's nothing special. It's a No Limits bag from uh, Academy. I've had it a couple of years. I actually like the bag a lot. I used it for a long time for uh, day hike bags. You've seen it in plenty of my videos. Um, when I started building this kit, I had the bag. I don't use it for day hikes anymore because I have the uh, haversack and the canteen set now that I use. So I had the bag. So I decided to try to convert this one to, to this purpose. The issue is room. Uh, everything I have, of course, here fit in it. Uh, I don't have room for food. Uh, and that's not going to cut it. If I have to be out there for 10, 14 days, I'm going to have to have food uh, just to keep energy level up. So I'm, I'm going to be in the market for a bigger bag. The key to that is, is right now this bag weighs 20.2 pounds when everything's in it. Uh, I want to keep it light, but I don't want to be 100% miserable on the trip. Now, we'll start with the obvious thing first. I had the tarp in it, I had the hammock, and I had the suspension system in it. So, no matter what, while I'm out, and this, this the whole area I, I work in is, finding trees is going to be, that, that's not even in question, that's easy. Uh, so that's why I went with the hammock setup. I got out one of my old hammocks that, uh, actually, the people that were at the first meetup in Tennessee remember this hammock. Uh, I've used it, in, I think, in a few videos. It's really long. I mean, it's long. It's like 10 foot long. Um, but I already had it. Uh, for something that I, I'm hoping I never have to use, uh, I'm not going to go out and buy a lot of gear for it if I already have the gear. Um, so, my sleep system, my shelter is taken care of, and that's all already put up. We'll start on the outside. As those of you that follow me on Facebook saw, uh, some people, especially Bob, has already noticed the pink bottle of uh, Perel. Uh, I found them on sale. I just bought all of them that they had. They, I think they were like 25 cents a piece or something like that at the grocery store, and I just grabbed them all up. Uh, I don't care about the color. If I'm trying to hide, I can throw it inside a bag. 
Also on the outside of the bag, I'm going to start on the outside obviously. On the outside of the bag is my bug spray. Um, and a bandana. I've already been asked questions on Facebook about this item. Uh, this is a Bianchi law enforcement carrier and inside of it uh, I carry the Sabre. Uh, it's, it's, it used to be, I don't know if it still is or not, you used to have to have a, a license to get this. I have the license. Um, this is the CS Tear Gas and Red Pepper mixed together. It's some wicked stuff and it has some great range. Uh, I still have my pistol, of course, that, that I always have with me, but uh, this this comes in handy. We have been see I don't even know what the deal is, but we've had a number of reportings of cougars lately down here. I don't know if it's the weather change or what's going on. Um, anyway, that just sits on the outside so I can get to it on the back. Let me look around. On this side, it has a side pocket on the waist belt. And in here, I just have my little Altoids first aid kit. I've done that in other videos. There's no reason to go into that. And I marked the pocket with an X. I know it's supposed to be red, but mine's black. That's the color Sharpie I had. On the other side uh, is my compass and a little Leatherman. Well, not even a Leatherman, a little multi-tool. I consider this part of my first aid kit, uh, getting out splinters and uh, thorns, that kind of stuff. It has a little pair of scissors, a little knife that isn't worth a crap, screwdriver. Um, it's a handy thing to have, uh, and it, it's a huge time saver. So I consider this part of my first aid kit. It just sits on the other side because of space. On the straps up, on the straps, on one side I have one of my um, SE knives and it's hooked right to it. It's, it's through the straps. It took a little bit of work to get that through there last night and a pair of needle nose, but I finally got it to go through there and then I put a ranger band around the whole thing. It's, it's, that thing's going nowhere. On the other strap, I have my flashlight. Uh, it's just an LED flashlight and I have extra batteries. Uh, this is a luxury item, but I'd rather have it than not. Last things on the outside, I have two stainless steel water bottles, one on each side. Uh, they're painted black just because, as you know from watching my videos, I always have that grill paint around, so I just paint them black. Uh, I think one of these was pink when I bought it and the other one was yellow or something. I just paint them. Uh, sorry, had to get a drink there. Okay, so now we'll go into the pockets. This doesn't really take that long because there's not a ton of stuff in here. It has compression straps. Undo those. This front pocket lays out inside of here. We'll start here. In this bag is my little folding stove. One of them. Uh, these I just get from Academy 2. They just take the tablets, or you can burn wood in it. I've done that plenty of times. This one's brand new. I haven't used it yet. Uh, for cooking, boiling water, whatever the case may be. They're small. They're handy. They're light. Uh, I like them, and I just keep it in here just to keep the mess down. Plus, it has kind of sharp corners on it, and I don't want to rip a, a bag because of a $2 stove, $4 stove, whatever it is. I just keep that set down inside this long pouch right here. In these pockets here, <clears throat> I have my folding saw. I have my fire kit, primed, ready to go. 
I have a sharpening steel for my knife. I have a little one of those mini sharpies. I have a fire steel, an extra one. And because of where I live at, I know y'all might get tired of hearing me say because of where I live at. I say that to stress the point of you have to make this thing for the environment you're in. Uh, I have a snake bite kit. It has the alcohol swipes, the exacto blades, the suction cups. It has everything inside here. That's all that's on the front right here. Let me close this up real quick. On the main compartment, the compression straps, of course, do the same job for it. Uh, I actually have a thing of, of instant noodles in it now because I'm going to eat lunch up here. <clears throat> Let me get everything centered back up again. I'm moving around. Inside of this, this is just a Magellan bag. I don't remember what came in it. A sleeping bag liner or something came in it. Once again, just for convenience sake and to keep down dirt and soot. I have my uh, Stanley cook kit. Just been a couple of minor modifications to it. Uh, of course, like just about everyone, I got rid of the plastic and put in a split ring. I have my silverware, knife, fork, and spoon. I have this piece of wire. I'll show you why in a second. I have another bandana for cleaning it up. I have a scrub pad here for cleaning it. Garlic salt, salt, crushed red peppers, black pepper. Let's see if I can get this up here so you can see. I don't know if you can see this wire. It goes right under the lip all the way around and at each end I've twisted a loop into it. The reason for that is is because when I want to hang this as a kettle I take this wire out, hook it through these two loops and my kettle hangs. It hang, My pot hangs. Uh, and yes, the, wherever it is Doing it this way, the lid still fits on it, and I didn't have to cut anything. I'll turn it a little bit. So it, it, it hangs. Uh, it boils great like that over the top of a fire. Uh, it takes no room. It took five minutes sitting down with a pair of needle nose pliers and a, and a spool of wire to make this. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a pretty common sense item to have uh, or adaption to make to it. Throw all this stuff back in there real quick. So there's my cook kit. Um, small, light, extremely sturdy. I didn't know if I was going to like these. I saw these actually. It was on one of Bob Knight's videos. I didn't know if I was going to like it or not, so, but I bought one to try it. Uh, I trust his opinion on a lot of things. Uh, and I, I fall in love with them. I've got, I've got a couple of these now. They're, they're really good little sets. Anyway, down inside the main compartment here, you'll see that I keep a lot of stuff in these little bags. This is a DeWalt bag from a pair of safety glasses. I've just found over the years that certain things, it's easier if they're in a bag. Uh, they, it keeps, keeps your, your real bag neater. Um, I have a spool of 350 pound test bank line. This happens to be orange. I have green at home. I'm going to switch it out. Uh, this is 250 feet. It's a brand new roll. Uh, I like these. They come on these little plastic tubes. I get them at Academy. I like these little 250 foot roll ones. I buy the bigger ones for my, my bush crafting kit and stuff because I go through a lot more line. 
inside this bag, once again, another bag. Uh, I think I mentioned this before. Whoever has them cheapest at the time, Home Depot, Lowe's, um, McCoy's, whoever, they'll sell these things like three bags, different size bags for $4, $2, whatever. When I see them on sale, I'll buy them. I have, I have a bunch of these at home that I've never even taken apart yet. Uh, I, I love these things for kits. Everything sits flat and small. Inside here is uh, two one-gallon Ziploc bags, two 55-gallon drum liners, uh, two 35-gallon drum liners, a clean bandana wrapped up and sealed up, a tape roll, and bread twist ties. All of those things are extremely handy uh, for so many reasons. Uh, in my basic or bare bones basic bushcraft series, I'll get into why I carry these kind of things. Uh, and then down at the bottom, the end of the kit, I have a schmog. Uh, I, I've gotten back to using these now. Uh, they're, they're so nice for the insects and the heat and other stuff that's going on. So, now you've seen what's in my get home bag. Uh, you will notice the lack of food. The reason for the lack of food is there is no space in this bag for it. So I will have to get a different bag. Uh, it's not critical today, this week, this month, that I get a new bag uh, because I'm still in testing. Uh, once I finalize everything that's going to be in here, um, then I can get in a, a bag that's appropriate for what I'm going to carry. Uh, one other thing that I will be adding to this that I haven't gotten yet, and I'll have to get with Kenneth Cram on it, is I want to get one of those um, homemade bug nets that he uses for his hammock uh, that packs up real small. i, I got to get the exact details from him on that. Um, other than that, 20, call it 21 pounds. Um, this is definitely, I can definitely go two weeks outside with this. I need food. Um, but I can definitely go two weeks with, with this kit without any problems. Uh, I'm going to be tired and miserable and hot because of the traveling every day. But as far as, as creature necessities are, are needed, uh, those are all met with this kit. I'd love to hear some opinions on things. Of course, I always have my, my pistol with me and the extra mags. Those are always in my vehicle. Um, but like I said, I would love to hear some opinions. Um, I'm thinking about a soul bibby uh, bag to put in here for the 14, 20 nights a year that I'm going to need something to keep warmer when it when a real cold front that we call a cold front gets down here. Um, other than that, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I really honestly want to hear some opinions on things that, that people think would be a good idea to put in here. Until next time, get out in the dirt, have some fun. Thanks.